Welcome back homebodies. Thank you for coming back for another video. Today's video is going to be more in depth with some tips and tricks that I use when decorating for the holidays. The first thing you want to use, which I've learned from a florist, is to use green twine. Um, it's called floral uh, wire. And I like it because it blends with the garland a lot more seamlessly. The goal for this project was to keep my budget under $100 and I am about to disclose to you guys how I was able to do just this little bitty project for under 100 bucks. So everything is pretty much from Hobby Lobby minus like a couple of items. But the first tip is to buy on sale, buy on clearance. Um, small things do make a big impact. The garland itself was about $25 with the 50% off uh, deal. And all of these smaller picks were about 50 cent and the medium picks were about a dollar, $2. And the larger picks were about five to $10. The main thing that I want you guys to see is how I bought in quantities. For the smaller picks, I buy from 15 to 17. For the medium picks, I buy between seven to 11. And for the larger picks, I pick up three to five of those. Here in this step-by-step -step process, as you can see, I'm trying to secure this garland directly to my banister. And as you can see, like there is like a main metal piece to this garland. This is what I'm going to use to attach my heavier, larger picks that were about 10 bucks. And I think I used about three of those on this garland. And for the other medium sized picks with flocking, I paid about three bucks for those. Um, I think I bought those from Joann's years ago. So you will notice that I will go back and forth with my larger picks first and then use my smaller picks to fill in those uh, empty spots. And the reason why I do this is because I want to make sure that I'm getting a full theme. So some people, they will go and buy two and three of one say, uh, style of garland. I don't do that. I use my picks to fill in those dead spaces, but I like to use a base layer like this garland in order to get the full green effect that I'm looking for to, you know, join that design with the other five trees that's in the room. Clearly I'm getting my steps in for today because I have to go up and down the stairs to take a step back, look and see what I'm doing, go get something else because I don't want that pick to go there. I don't want this pick to go. Either way it goes, it turned out well, but as you can see, I am just trying to marry the small picks with the big picks. Do not get hung up on if you can actually see um some of the pieces sticking out uh like the the bottom of that pick because you're gonna stick another pick in that place in order to uh, disguise it um but just focus on the overall design now let's be honest i am a little lazy i don't take all the tags off if you catch a tag then take off the tag okay but as far as i'm concerned i am more focused on getting the look down and then I'll go in and perfect it later and a portion of my perfecting is to take the tags off. For the heavier items you do want to loop them around the larger metal piece of the garland and for the lighter ones you don't really need to do that that's why you buy lighter cheaper stuff that way it doesn't just fall off the banister when you put it on there, if that makes sense. Going in with my needle nose pliers, I did get this, um, I, I guess you could call it a pick or branch from Hobby Lobby and I'm just breaking those pieces up because I want to take that exact same element and apply it over here on the banister the same way I had them applied in the Christmas tree toppers. You, you really wanna focus on repetition of the exact same materials. 
it's okay if you're buying 25 or 31 of one particular item because it's that repetition that you get a very organized and symmetrical look. Somehow I knew and made 